Hey YouTube, how are you going? So I thought I'd do a video on my recent mental health meeting with my new psychiatrist. Uh, he's going to probably be my new psychiatrist for the next uh, long term period uh, because I complained about the last psychiatrist being too complacent. So that's basically my story on that. Uh, it's a long story and I feel that Dr. Levine wasn't um, receptive enough to my feelings about wider world issues and wasn't savvy enough on those issues. That's basically why I decided to change my psychiatrist. And my new psychiatrist is much more open-minded, I think, and has the potential to really evaluate my systems and my belief systems and my issues with life as a person. Obviously, as a what they call a mental health client, um, primarily um, seems to be the best way to appraise me from his, his point of view. But I'm opening up the world of veganism, veganism, minimalism, being kind to other people, the issues of the world like overpopulation, climate change crisis, um, urban, the urban glut or, or, or urban overcrowding, um, animal exploitation, all these problems that we have to deal with in our life. These are the main problems that that need attention in our lifetimes. And I believe the more we focus on them, the more depth and more work we have to do with them. It's interesting that putting things into context is very useful. So when I did went to my meeting, I didn't know what sort of knowledge this guy had about veganism in particular, but my knowledge of veganism is more extensive than the average person's and I realised that when I, as I went to the meeting with my psychiatrist, I realised that he did have shortcomings in his knowledge about, about veganism and what it entailed and this is going to be expected. Um, the kind of facade that Dr. Levine put up about how he understood veganism entirely and felt that I didn't understand my mental illness as well as he understood veganism contributed to an air of complacency and arrogance which I didn't like in, in Dr. Levine so that's why um, I decided to get a new psychiatrist and I believe that my decision to change to Dr. Zahal will be a very good one and may well be productive in terms of learning more about the world and operating within the world itself. So we're all dealing with the coronavirus pandemic. We're all dealing with that problem in our lives. We all have to understand that um, it's not going to go away soon and it's, got, it's related to animal exploitation. And that's the important thing to realize that linking everything back to the ultimate causation is very important for all of us. For the rest of this video, I want to, so in, interesting thing about that meeting, um, he didn't know what antinatalism actually is. I talked to him the word, vegan antinatalism is a word that I mentioned, and I told him there was a combination of vegan plus antinatalist. He didn't know what antinatalist meant, and I told him that I'd explain to him, okay, anti means against, and natalism is to do with giving birth. So, um, Combine the the, work, the the roots together and you get being against breeding, against childbirth. Um, and from my point of view, um, using that word, I use it to connote um, giving birth to any species, regardless of whether it's humans or other animals. Any, any birth, animals, um, is classified under antinatalism from my point of view. That's not a universal definition. But as we know, words do change and evolve, and it's, an, it's a definition that I believe is, is most useful at the present time to define it in terms of all animals, including humans. So, yeah, putting things into context, we realise that, that, you know, we live in a very anthropocentric society. And when we talk about humans specifically, we often forget other animals and we think that other animals are a separate part of the equation. They're not. Um, the more we work with animals, the more we live with animals. And 
combine our existence together with animals, the more we realise that we're being speciesist when we talk about animals as being other animals rather than rather than a collectively the community of animals including humans. So in humans particularly I understand that we're doing a lot of study on humans especially and um, they are a particular area of focus because we are the human species. We communicate with, with each other more, we interact with each other more and we learn from each other more. So that's why humans are somewhat the focus for most other humans. In regards to this particular question, I want to ask you uh, this question that came up in my mind and in my Facebook feed uh, recently, uh, I, I was prompted in my Facebook page to write about this question. Can mental psychosis lead to genetic advance? I'm talking about my mental illness in particular. I've been diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia and I'm just curious to know whether those experiences that I'm alleged to have can lead to advanced life forms. So that means that my brain, if I were, supposing I were to breed a child, would that child have a genetic mutation that might be useful to his existence and in terms of creativity or um, I don't know, maybe greater forms of intelligence in some way. Um, this is the question I'm asking because I'm, I'm really curious to know from a medical point of view whether the experiences that mentally ill people have, their evolution in modern day human society can lead to genetic advance. More intelligent humans, more creative humans, humans who have a high level of happiness sometimes or joy or pleasure. Um, you know, this is linked, of course, to things like taking ecstasy or MDMA drugs or something, which is a fascination of mine as well. I don't, I've never taken these sort of drugs, but if I were medically trained and I were an experimentalist, I would definitely put myself in a position to take drugs like that and to be more interested in um, the effects of that on genetic, on genetic advance and genetic breeding. Um, I think genetic advance is severely under-researched, um, not least because it's got ethical implications. So we think of the ethical implications of, of researching genetics, um, there are huge implications like things like violating the stem cell biology or something. Um, if we res do our research on real humans or embryonic humans, it's, it's an insult and an offence to the human uh, dignity of the human existence itself, that sort of thing, which, with, which is very interesting to me. I don't know much about the ethics involved with with that, but if I were to combine that that knowledge with my knowledge of veganism, which is quite strong from my point of view, um, I think I'd be in a very very good position to understand the world um, uh, from a very holistic perspective. So, folks, that's the question I want to put forward to you today. If you've got any ideas or suggestions for me about this question. Can mental psychosis lead to genetic advance? I'd like you to leave a comment uh, in the section below because I really do want to know how this can affect the future of the human species and the evolution of humans. Um, in obviously being an antinatalist, I'm opposed to breeding ad hoc. So I'm opposed to breeding just without, you know, not, not in a lab, but in terms of um, researching biotechnology and human biology and genetic mutation and so on, I'm really, really interested in about the future. Uh, in this next 100, 200, 500, 1000 years, it's going to be pivotal um, to whether the human race, the, sorry, the human species will actually survive and thrive um, and be able to take care of itself. And that to me, my friends, is the most important consideration of all. Thank you very much.